So the third part to our dual battery system is our accessory harness. So you might see we've already installed the dual battery into the tray, we've installed the Red Arc charger into the front grille. Now we want to run our accessory harness to the rear to plug in our sockets to run our accessories. Now this customer's gone for a triple socket, We've got an angle socket for the fridge, a volt slash USB combined socket here, and also just a 12 volt outlet. So let's go ahead, install this harness into this 2021 2.8 litre Prado and show you how to get into your Prado. Okay, so the first step with our harness, we'll just remove the cable tie holding it together. And you'll notice straight away that there's about just over a metre of sleeving on the harness before it goes to a grommet. Now that grommet is designed to replace an existing grommet in the Toyota firewall. So if we come closer, we're going behind the air box, you see a grommet right there. So our first step is actually to remove the existing one and we're going to replace it with ours. Okay, so I've just used a flat blade screwdriver just to pop that out into my hand. You'll see I've exposed a hole that goes into carpeting in the interior of the car. So now that we've got that out, we've exposed a hole into the interior of the car, we now want to go to the interior of the car, take apart our kick panels and find that location. So let's come into the driver's footwell area, opening up the driver's door. Now basically we're looking up under the, or above the accelerator panel is the area that we're going to be trying to locate. But probably the first step to make it easier is the removal of this kick panel and also this side trim here. So we'll start by doing that and these are simple, just using your hands, maybe a flat blade screwdriver if you need, but they're all just held in by plastic clips here and plastic clips into the gutter where all the cabling runs down under here. So I'll start by getting my fingers, I'll probably start this end, just getting my fingers up under there and just prying those plastic clips. You'll hear them pop, so I've heard one release. If I get the edge released, work my way down. Another one, another one. You can hear them releasing as I go. So that's the back ones. Just try and release these front ones. Two, three, and there should be a fourth one. There we go. That's all that holds this trim in. So we'll just sit that aside for now. That's exposed our existing Toyota harness, and that's what we're going to follow to run our cable down through this electrical cable gully. So now that we've got that out, there's one, if you reach in across the foot panel, you'll feel a plastic clip here. So the plastic clip right there and that'll just come off with your hand. It's just really finger tight. And we'll just keep that aside for now. Now there's nothing else really holding that panel now other than plastic clips. So it's just a matter of removing that panel with the plastic clips. I'll show you how that's located so there's a plastic clip goes into a hole there and there's also a plastic piece on the panel here that slots into that piece of steel so the best way once we've got that clip out is pulling it towards us and we just got to get those to release sometimes those clips will stay in there um, and it'd be just a matter of pulling them out and reinserting into the plastic there this one stayed in so it'll just be a matter of pushing that back in in the end so we've exposed this whole area now. We want to find that hole in the carpeting. Okay, you might need a light in this um, part of the install and a head torch is a good option. Just using one of our head torches here, just to illuminate up above the accelerator panel, uh, pedal, sorry. So if you look up above the accelerator pedal, top of the brake booster, that's about the location. It is behind carpet, but what we want to do is find that location and I'll, I'll bring this in so you can kind of see. So here's our accelerator pedal up the top. We can see the carpet above it and our brake booster off to the side of it. So our cable's in behind the carpet there, but really what we want to do is just 
push that carpet back up just to allow our cable to be pushed through from outside so we just want a bit of a gap there so it's not just going to hit the carpet and not go anywhere and now that we've just flexed that a little bit we should be able to feed our cable from the engine bay and have it come out somewhere in this area and then have it come out with the existing Toyota harness here so let's give that a go we'll go back to the engine bay okay so we're back in the engine bay now and this time we're looking for the end of our harness so the, the non-sleeved end, find the very end of that. And I'm going to feed it through and because I want it to naturally fall down, I'm going to feed the cable down, have gravity help us out. So we're just feeding it down in between the carpet and the panel. We know we've found that gap there and that seems to be going quite freely. So I'm assuming it's come out. It's stopped now, but quite a bit went through. So I'll go back into the car now and we'll see if we can locate that cable. So yes, I've located the cable. And now I can go and pull that excess through. So it's just above the panel, right where we said it was gonna come out. And I can watch that cable in the engine bay a little little knot there we'll just undo let it sit flat i'm just going to pull that through till our grommet reaches the firewall okay oh, almost there so we'll just push that extra bit through and now that grommet is going to replace the one that we pulled out. Now we may need a screwdriver just to help that go into the hole again. Now probably the easiest way to do this is try and get the bottom to sit in first, naturally, and then we can push against it from the top because we've got better access on the top than we do the bottom. So we'll push that bottom side in work on the sides first and then push that top through last now a bit of that side has stayed out so I'm going to try and twist that up towards myself so that it stays on the top Okay, there we go, we've got our grommet into position. So now we've got our harness into the interior of the vehicle. Really the last thing we wanna do is connect to the battery. So that's gonna be the it at the moment in the engine bay. We're going to focus on now getting a cable to the rear of the vehicle. So let's go back to the driver's uh, cockpit area. And really at this point, we just wanna keep in mind how we're going to secure the harness later on. So it's come straight through the firewall here. We've got existing cable we can follow. We just want to keep that in mind and continue to follow the cabling down here. So you can take these clips out if you want. Otherwise, we can just thread straight through like that. A um, little screwdriver will unrelease those tabs and you can take up all those gates and put them back down at the end. But this kind of just saves doing that. And we can just pull it through. I should just mention, if you are having trouble with that grommet that we just tackled in the engine bay, a little bit of lubricant onto the grommet too will let it slide into that hole a little bit easier. Because um, it is a tight fit, we want to keep a water tight seal there. So you can see I'm just threading through one end, pulling on the other end, just until the hole amount comes through. So just keep it in mind we want enough there to cable tie and sit out the way so I'm leaving a little bit of slack there and then in the back door we want to get prepared now to thread it through to the rear and you'll see there's two parts to this plastic panel here one of them is held by or the top one is held by two 
little screws under these little plates. So I'll grab a flat blade screwdriver, we'll pop out those little plates and that'll expose, expose the screw that we need to remove. So firstly with a flat blade screwdriver you'll see a little notch in the back of this plate. Just get that in there and it'll just allow us to pop out that little cover. And there's another one back here, same procedure. I want to pop out that little cover. And now that's exposed 10 mil bolts. So we'll grab a 10 mil banner. Okay, so we're just gonna go in there with a socket. Keep in mind when you do these up, they are just going into plastic, so you do want to be careful. You, wouldn't, you don't want to crank them in really tight. Removing is fine though. So that's the first piece of plastic out of the way. And our second piece is really exactly the same as we did in the front. Plastic clips there, three, three at the back. So we just want to release them. and you can see our channel exactly the same as the front so now we can thread that cable through the center pillar and we want to see it come out in this area so I'll just jump in the driver's seat thread it through So you can see that cable's come through. It's even gone through the first gate, which is good. I'll feed it through the second one. And then I just want to feed all my excess through. Pull it all through. We'll just make sure it's sitting nice and loose in the front still. We don't want to pull too much through that it's too tight. So the harness that we've run down to the rear of the vehicle is seven meters long. So it is long enough to put the sockets where you want. You might notice that we've followed down the driver's side, but we're, we're going to have excess cable because we're just going to mount them on the back on the same side as the battery. If you did want to put them on the other side, it would be a matter of coming through the firewall, the exact same procedure, probably then running across the back of the dash and following the exact same procedure down the other side of the vehicle. So the harnesses are designed that when you get there, cut them the excess off and make it the length that you require. In this particular case, the customer's gone for a triple set of sockets and we're going to go in the rear area here. Um, so our next step is to get this side panel away from the outer panel of the vehicle so that we can get access from our cables at, at the back of the back seats and just get them to this area here. Now you'll notice in the kit, there's all the accessories that are required to fully complete the install. So all of our sockets are pre-wired inside the housing. It's just going to be a matter of putting our two terminals on and connecting into this block of sockets. So our first step in this procedure is to start taking away, releasing this side panel. So firstly, we've got a clip that pulls out and that exposes a screw. So that's going to release this part of the panel then by taking some of this outer seal away, we can release some of the plastic clips along the top there. So I'll just sit in here now and we'll, um, we'll start by removing this Phillips screw. I can sit in there, there's one more, which is similar to the last plates that we saw inside. There's a little slot there, if we get a flat blade in there, It'll allow us to pop that out. Just keep that plastic clip. We've got another Phillips head screw there. Now we don't need to fully remove this panel. We really just need to be able to reach in there. So we'll start with that amount and we'll pull away our seal just, just enough to release our plastic away from it, like so. And then I'm just going to grab my fingers in behind 
and I can hear those plastic clips releasing already. Got another plastic clip right there, so I'm just going to focus my fingers down there, release it. If you look in there, we can actually see where a lot of them are. There's another one down there. And if we get close to them, as close as we can with our fingers, it gives us a bit more leverage to release them. And then we've got these sort of clips sitting along the top here. So they just pop out as well. So just get as close as you can with your fingers. And you'll see I've released another two there. Another two. And I'll try and just release these ones. Just give us a bit more room. So now that we've pulled these clips out and the panel is flexible, we can get our hand in there. A little trick to making it easier to spot our cable is to get this cup holder out. And all it is is really a clip on this inside. So if you can reach, if you can get this apart far enough to get your hand through, it gives us full access. And I'm just going to push that clip in and you'll see this cup holder is just going to pop straight out. I'll just show you. So it's basically here, it's quite hard, you, you, you'll find it hard to get it from this, the top side, but coming from underneath, just a little bit of pressure in there will allow that tab to come over and it comes out really easy and you can get a full hand in there. You can see in there, we can even get our hands in there to cable tie, it gives us full access in that area, so it's really perfect, quite handy. We can even, um, when we drill our hole, wherever we put our sockets, we can reach in, we can see that everything's clear. So it's a really good viewing port through there. Feeding that cable from where we've already got it at the back and see if we can find it in here. Just removing the rubber here to gain access. Threading it through, I can see the existing Toyota harness here. See it through there. quite away. I'm pretty confident I'll be able to find it back here. Okay so once again a light is handy um, to find our cable. I can see straight through there and there's our cable straight up and we do have excess there so I'm just going to pull that excess so you can actually see how much there is right in the back seating area. That's about what we're going to need. So you can see we've got a lot of excess because we're on the same side. Now the next thing we need to be careful in this particular install is we're putting our sockets here, but once again this will change wherever you're putting your sockets. Wherever you decide to go is to make sure that you're clear behind. Now that's why the surface mount ones are a little bit easier in this regard because there's so much aircon gear you can see behind here, a whole air conditioning unit, so flush mount ones would require the, the sockets to stick all the way into the body and we just couldn't do it in this area because of everything behind there. In some positions, if you're putting sockets out here or up through there, you'd be able to do that no problems at all. There's nothing under there. It's all clear. Um, but this allows us to keep them away from the body so we can plug our sockets in. It also means we only have to drill a little hole for the cable to come through, not all the holes for the sockets. So we're going to use this and it means that we're free in there. But we do just want to make sure that we are free where we drill the hole. And so I'm checking that right now, um, that I'm not going to drill into any aircon units or, or our cable's got plenty of room to come through that hole. Now before we cut our cable to length, it's best that we reinstall all of our cabling back to the front now to make sure that we haven't pulled it too tight. So if we sit it into position, and yeah, if we do this before we cut the cable at the back, it'll make sure we don't accidentally cut it too short. So I'm going to sit my cable in where I want it to sit under these plastic clips making sure it can sit along there and then our plastics all going to go back into position and making sure the cable's not pinched in any way it's free so I can see it's all good through there I'm going to put our rubber seal back on and then just in the reverse order, we're going to re-position um, our plastic panels. Now a good thing, rather than just hitting these in without looking, if you take a look under there with the light, you can 
match up these plastic clips with the holes in the body. So rather than hitting them before we know that they're in the hole, I can see all three are in the hole. It's just a matter of a tap and they're straight in. And then once those are lined up, it's going to have already lined up our inner ones. So that's fully back and installed. Reverse order, we place this back in, line up our holes. And just like I said before, be a bit careful reinserting these because they are going into plastic. You can tell I'm just going a bit lighter on the trigger there. And then our plastic clips will just sit back in to position. that okay so we're done in the rear keep making our way towards the front and really same thing reverse order so we took this off last so it goes on first so we're sitting our cables into position lining up we want to try and line up that plastic clip in the top hole and the plastic into that steel once we can see that they're in just a tap again and screwing up our um, little plastic screw there and lastly we'll just place our kick panel into position and the same thing is in the rear we're going to try and line up our holes before we tap them in. So I can see this one's actually off center so it's a good thing we checked. So every single one is sitting in. So now we know that our cable has been secured the entire length of the vehicle we're safe to cut our harness. We know there's no chance that we've pulled a cable tight and we accidentally cut too short. Now we know that the amount of cable here is definitely all of our excess. So let's go about drilling that hole, bringing our cable out and cutting it to length. Okay, it's time to drill our hole, man our sockets. Now, I can't stress how careful you wanna be here to make sure that you don't drill into the back of the vehicle or to make sure that's clear Think of every scenario, we've placed our sockets here, we've set up the seven seats, we know it all clears. Just wanna make sure that nothing is going to intrude on our um, the position that we've chosen for our sockets. So I know that I need to drill a hole right in the center here and I'm just going to have one last check, even though I know it's clear that there's nothing in there. I can see where I'm coming through, through that hole. I'm just gonna put a nice little hole in there. and just drill nice and slow, just to be careful. So that's my pilot hole. I'm gonna drill a little bit bigger hole. I need to drill one big enough for my cable to go through. So just a slightly bigger hole now. And just drilling slow again. We can make sure from this side that our cable fits through. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is feed my cable through here get my whole hand in there easy actually what I might do is just put a slight bend it's just going to help me when I get there to come through that hole a little bit of a trick now I can see it through there just gonna get it to come through like that I can feed the excess through While I'm in this position, I'll use some of the cable ties out of our kit because I can see through there, I can see the existing Toyota harness and I'm going to secure my harness to it. So 
So you can see that's my cable, the black one there, and you can see the tow harness in the back that I can secure to. So I'll just get in there and secure the, that harness. going to cut the cable tie ends. There's our cable tie ends. So yep, I'm happy with where that harness is sitting. Exact length that I need now. So I'm going to cut this cable. And we can cut through this cable because we know we haven't connected to the battery and it's very important that we haven't connected to the battery and put the fuse in because we would have a live cable. So there's a reason why we leave that step till the very last. We're, we're working with a dead cable now. We don't want to blow our fuse or do any damage to the wiring that we've just gone to the trouble of installing. So what I'm doing now is just splitting the two, the outer insulation. So this is dual insulated cable. And I can run down just a bit because if you see in the back of this is a triple socket so they're a little bit further than a dual we've got one cable is going to go on this end our red cable which is our positive and our black cable which is our negative so we need to separate them enough to go to each side of this set of sockets and all of this will be hidden away behind our tent little socket tent there I'm just going to take away the outer insulation, fully remove that. Now in our pack of accessories, which I might just empty now so we can see what's included in here. So we've got our fuses, the last thing we want to put in, a couple pieces of heat shrink, two yellow terminals and that's where we're up to now. So we want to strip enough off. Basically our cable goes into that point. You can see a cylinder inside that terminal. So we want our cable to sit inside the end of the yellow and go right into the end of that cylinder. So that's how much I need to strip off. Can just use with a pair of cutters, just a light squeeze there. We'll just cut through the rubber and allow us to just strip that much off the cable. And these terminals will just push straight on if you're having trouble, it makes it even easier if you twist the copper. Now ideally, a pair of electrical crimpers would be perfect and in a yellow position to crush that terminal. Um, they are an inexpensive tool and highly recommend if you're doing electrical work to have a pair of electrical crimpers such as these. They do just crush the terminal onto the cable so you could use some other tool to crush down but ideally a pair of crimpers and this is purely cosmetic even though it's hidden away I just like it to look good so I just put a bit of sleeving on if you're ever mucking around later on you can easily distinguish which is positive and which is negative a little cigarette lighter or a blowtorch will shrink those heat shrinks down over the terminal I've got a little blowtorch here I'm just going to shrink that down So, now you can see our sockets here. If you're having trouble getting these terminals on, you can just release the collar here. That will give us a bit more room. Allows us to push that out, make it easier to work with. We can get our positive on. Onto the piggyback terminal. And once we've got that on, we can push our socket back in collar will hold it back into position and same down on the negative we just want to make it easier for a moment pushing that on and then locking it in with our collar again. And there we go, we can probably push our excess in. Get rid of 
that seatbelt for a bit and now we're ready to actually mount our sockets into position you can see there's some screws in the kit using a screw gun it's probably ideal making sure that we're clear in there which I have already done so we'll start with the top bolt We are just going into plastic here. Make sure my bottom bolt's lining up where I want it. Perfect. So there we go, we've finished the rear electrical connections, finished routing the cable. So cup holders back into position. Now we can put our rear panel back in so reverse order is always the same way so that was the last part we popped off we want to start from there and work our way back so get these pins into their holders first push them down so they're sitting in their slot that one's sitting that one's sitting so just important that we get them all lined up first before we try and hit anything home and then we'll start from back here And then our white ones, lastly, that's in the hole. That one's not quiet, so we want to line him up. And then a tap on each of those. Okay, so before we put our screws in, we'll reinsert our seal along the back of the door, which is just pushing into place. And then we have a Phillips head bolt here. And then that also had a plug on that hole, which is just a 90 degrees turn. And then we had another Phillips head in here. And that one had a plastic clip on it, which sat back into there. And there we go, our installation is complete in the rear. We're just going to need our cable ties and our fuses up the front. The very last part of our installation for the accessory harness is our electrical connections on the auxiliary battery. So we'll start by disconnecting the negative terminal. Holding on to those bolts, nuts, sorry. And next we'll do the positive terminal. Now we can leave that positive terminal on from the red arc and we're going to do reverse order. So firstly we'll start with our positive from the accessory harness connecting on top of the positive for the red arc. And a washer. And we can go ahead and fully do that up now safely with the positive terminal. We can do that safely now with the negative connected. It's not connected to the body of the vehicle. And then the same procedure over here, we're going to reinsert our negative from the red arc. Keep in mind where we want our accessory harness to run. And connect that over top of the red arc wire flat washer, spring washer comes with this battery. This may be a little bit different depending on what battery you are using in the kit. We're using a Delcor HDC27 in this install. Each battery may have slightly different connections on it. But basically the same procedure. We're doing our positives, then our negatives. And then with this fuse holder, it's actually got a little lug there that we can cable tie and secure that into position and just finish everything off nicely. Once we've done that, we can put our 15 amp fuse into the holder and go down the back and see that our sockets are all powered up. And at that point, we've fully completed our dual battery system. Place 
that one cable tie there. And while we are doing the cable tying, we might as well secure our harness up until the firewall. So I'm going to put another one around the J bracket. J bolt on the battery tray. Going to come further down towards the firewall now with a few more cable ties. Just tying to the existing Toyota electrical harness that runs through this area as well. It's always good if we've got other electrical cables we can tie to. habit to take the ends off the cable ties and just turn the cable tie into the inside so that it can't scratch your arm if you're ever working in there. So there we go, we're fully complete. Let's put our 15 amp fuse in, head to the rear and see that we have power to our sockets. You'll notice there's a spare in the kit too and that is literally just that, just a spare. So now if we go down to the back we have a USB socket and incorporating a voltmeter. Instantly we will see that that voltmeter has power to it. So we're already reading 12.6 volts on our voltmeter. Now if I was to go start up the vehicle, we'd be able to test our dual battery system, see that the red arc's charging through this voltage meter. It really gives us a full story. started the car now you can see straight away we've jumped up 14.4 volts we know it's charging um, that won't necessarily always go straight to 14.4 depends on how charged the battery is but that sudden increase in voltage we know straight away that we are charging so we can test our red arc through there we can see how charged our battery is while we're camping and this customer has got USB points he's got an angle fridge socket to plug, plug his fridge into 12 volt socket to plug in lighting um, so yeah he's got got a lot of options there which is great and that's the full installation of our dual battery system the full installation of the accessory harness we've just done now